In this video, I'm going to show you how to use tasks. So let's dive into our project.co demo account. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to use tasks within a project, but the same things apply when you're looking at tasks in the global view as well. So let's go and find our project. And then let's click into the tasks tool. So what you can see here is a fairly well built out set of tasks. These tasks have subtasks in some instances. They have files attached. They have conversations on them. And this task is also has a creators and collaborators privacy setting that you can see with this icon, which means that it can be seen by collaborators as well as creators, which is great for things like kickoff calls or um, deliveries and things that you want to let the client know about. OK, so let's start with the basics. How do we add new tasks? So to do that, we can click new task here and that will open the main task, uh, new task pop up or we can click down on this button to add multiple tasks at the same time, or we can import tasks using the CSV task uh, importer. We can also quick add tasks using this bar here. So if I click into there and I say new task one, you'll see that a task is added and our cursor remains in. So we can add a new task two, for example. Let's just drag these up here so that I can show you how a couple more things. When in any task, you can click to edit here. So if I click to edit, I can say new task one, two, three, and that changes the name of the task. I can also drag a task using this icon to make it a subtask. As you will have just noticed, we are in drag and drop mode, so I can drag tasks to reorder them. When we open a task, you can see the task pop-up shows with all the information. So at the top of the task pop-up, we've got the task name. That can just be clicked and edited as we did before. And then we've got the uh, task status. So we can click in here and we can change the task status. And you can set your own task statuses up as well. So if you just go to edit task statuses here, then you get the account level task statuses and you can set your own statuses and where they go. And that gives you a, the ability to uh, add a workflow to your tasks. This is at the account level, so you get one, one workflow, so you can put your tasks through the same workflow. The privacy setting defines whether creators only can see it, and that's one of the three creator roles, or people with uh, creators and coll or collaborators can see the task if we set creators and collaborators. Like I said a moment ago, this means this is great for when you want tasks to be visible to collaborators as well. Tasks need to be part of a project, so you can see which part of, which project this task's part of here. Next in line is the description. The description areas in projects, tasks, and notes are super powerful. They all have the power of our slash commands menu. So if you're on any line and you type slash, you get an AI assistant formatting. You can add um, toggle lists or task lists, alerts, images, and files, and uh, tables and code, all sorts of different things that you can do in the descriptions. So I'd certainly recommend trying out the slash command menu in the description of uh, tasks. In most circumstances, a little bit of information is all you need. And for this one, we've got a Google Meet link uh, for this kickoff call. Next down, you can upload files to tasks directly. So these tasks, these uh, files will be attached to this task. In this instance, we've just got one, which is mood board. And then we've got a uh, comment section. So again, you have a separate comment section on every single task. So you can have a, a discussion on every task. This is great if you've got a task and you need to discuss the actual task with the person who's responsible for it. So you can see here that um, Lexi has said, Amy, will you join me on this client call? Amy has said, yes, absolutely, see you there. And you can use tools such as the emoji reactions to add reactions onto this as well. So if we had a, an emoji reaction, we've got a couple of reactions there. And you can see that we have the threaded reply so that we can reply in a thread as well. So this has got one reply in thread. 
So that's the left hand side of the task. The right hand side of the task is all about the data points. So this task has a single date, but we could have also given it no date, which would be no dated task. We could have also, uh, it's got a single date. It could have a date range, which is, has, which is a start date and an end date. Or it could have a recurring date, which means that every time the recurrence is completed, uh, a new task is generated. And we've got a very comprehensive recurrence um, creator. So you could create it daily, weekly, monthly, on the first of the month, the last of the month, um, every other month. There's lots of different things that you can do with the recurrence builder. Next up is assignee. So when you assign someone to a task, it's like saying they're responsible for the task. It also means that that task will show up in their My Tasks view. So it'll be something that they'll, they will come up in their tasks uh, view to actually work on. They'll also get any notifications when anything's updated in the task. Adding groups is a great way to filter tasks. So say for example, we had um, this task allocated to the copy team, then we could go and search all tasks um, that have the copy team as a group, and then we know they're all the um, tasks that the copy team is responsible for. Followers are similar to assigned, but instead, but when you add someone as a follower, it won't, the task won't show up in their My Tasks view, but they will get all updates from the task. So if anything changes in the task, such as the task status or description or a comments posted, then being added as a follower means that those people get those notifications. <clears throat> Priority is actually a custom field that we've added. So you can add custom fields here by clicking custom fields and you could add um, single line text, multi-line text, date, number, um, selects, anything that you can think of really, you can add a custom, you can add it as a custom field. And that means that you can collect the data points that are important to you on every single task. Here is where we can make this task a subtask by assigning a parent task. So say for example, we wanted to make this a parent task of um, video one, then we could actually choose video one as the parent task and this task would then show underneath it as a subtask. Or we can assign subtasks to this task. So you can see here that had brief is a subtask of this task. So I can click into had brief and I can open that task and you can see we have all the same information on here such as the description, files, comments, dates, everything is within here. And you can see on the had brief, this is actually a parent task. This actually has the parent task of the kickoff call. You can also allocate time. So you can see here we have one hour of allocated time and you can just click in here to edit the allocated time. And you can see that we have 45 minutes of actual time recorded on the task as well. So if we click into there, again, we can see it was Lexi, add it on the 4th of the 8th, and you can see that 45 minutes were added. So I guess in this instance, an hour was added for the, uh, allocated for the call, but 45 minutes were actually taken. A couple more things to point out on tasks is that you can delete a task using the delete button here. You can duplicate a task, which will copy the task along with all its data. And you can set custom fields on tasks by clicking here or by clicking here. Oops, sorry, by clicking here, actually creates a new custom field. And this shows you what custom fields are already on this project's tasks. And then if a task is complete, you can click complete here. Or the same thing happens if you go into the status and choose completed from there. Okay. So that's the task pop-up. Another thing to point out is that in the task list view, you can click into the cells to change data very quickly. And this applies to any cell as well. So you can choose a new date, change it in here. You can also change the status and you can change the assignee by clicking in the same, in the same way as well. At the end of the list view, you have the options. So you can open as a page, open in a pop-up, duplicate the task and delete. Very similar options to what we had on the task itself. Then all tasks come in multiple different views. So we're actually looking at the list view here. We also have a calendar view. So you can view all the tasks on a calendar. You can move tasks along to redate them that way if you like. They just drag and drop. 
You could look at tasks on a scheduler view, which is similar to the calendar view, but it shows you tasks um, grouped by person at the side and then on a horizontal date timeline. And again, you can just drag and drop tasks to change the date. And then we have the Kanban view as well. So you can see tasks in this view or um, with the columns of task status. So we have active, in progress, struggling, on hold and completed. And tasks can just be dragged and dropped from one option to another. If you want to change the Kanban columns, you can just come up here to status and perhaps change to priority. And that will show us any that don't have a priority set. These are the new tasks we created and then any that have a priority already set. So you can have uh, your Kanban columns be the task status or any custom fields that you've set on a task as well. I hope that's useful. It's a little bit of a whistle stop tour of tasks, but if you have any questions, I'd be very happy to answer them. Please get in touch with the support team. We'd love to help.